Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, starting off this video with a public service announcement. As of now, the ability to reset all of your commanders completely for free is now active. There is a link in the description down below that will bring you to the relevant article concerning submarines. And at the bottom of that article, there is a link to reset all of your commanders. Of course, by clicking this, this will reset every single commander on your account. So if you want to do that, make sure to do it. But again, be advised that every single commander on your account will have their skills reset. Meaning that you are now free to respect them as you see fit. This is due to, of course, the release of submarines and the need to respect certain commanders for ASW duties if you want to do that. And of course, too, if you want to move some commanders around to the submarines that have been released. That is why Wargaming is doing this at the moment. Of course, this doesn't mean you can't reset your commanders for free. You can do that in-game right now as well. You can just go into the Commanders tab, hit Reset, and you will not be charged the 500 blooms or the 300 something thousand Commander XP or the relevant amount of resources needed to reset your commander for whatever pointage that they are at at the moment. This will be active for the first two weeks of this update. After the first two weeks of this update, these offerings will no longer be available, and if you want to reset your commanders, you're going to have to pay for it. That is why I highly recommend you take advantage of the big reset and just reset all your commanders in one go. Because it's not like, you know, if you forget to reset a commander, well, I'm sorry, if you forget that you wanted to reset a commander and you reset all of them, you'll be able to go back and do it. But if you don't do it and you did want to... Uh, want to redistribute your commander points down the road then you're going to be charged for it so just go ahead reset all of them that way whenever you want to swap around their commander points you can go ahead and reset them as you play them so that's the big psa at the start of this video the rest of this video is a really really good match that we had in the tier 9 premium american well large super battle cruiser the alaska I say that because back when this thing was built, the Navy called it a large cruiser. When it realistically is more of a battle cruiser, but the Navy squares up and down. It's not a large cruiser. Sorry, it's not a battle cruiser nor a super cruiser. It is just a large cruiser armed with battleship caliber guns that happens to fulfill all the roles of a battle cruiser. It's able to run down smaller ships like cruisers and it's able to outgun them, but it has lighter armor than a battleship. So the Alaska's a really cool ship for, well, first off, it was really built, her and the Guam. They had incredibly short service lives, though. They were built very late in the war. In fact, I think the most that they either of them did is that they just provided um, some ASW screens for carrier groups. They didn't really get to do too much. I think the Alaska got to get a little bit of um, shore bombardment duties in there but other than that again they didn't do much too much during the war they were built so late um after the war they were quickly decommissioned it, it was ruled that it would be too expensive to maintain these ships as they were a class of two and all of their parts were unique to them it's not like the iowa sisters where there was four ships so you can get away with making you know multiple parts it's cheaper to mix stuff in bulk so you can make you know a ton of barrels for the iowas and it would make sense because there's four of them they all need barrels and they're all 16 inch guns so it's easy and cheap to make a bunch of barrels for those guns but for the alaskas uh the, it's only a ship of two it'd be way too expensive to keep them around i think there was some ideas tossed around about converting them into some um missile cruisers but that was tossed by the side but in this match right now we are currently pushing to the A-cap, facing a Leon, a Kagoro, and a Zetan at the moment. Now, Alaska's got a, quite a few gimmicks up her sleeve, be it that she has just about every single American thing going for her. She has super heavy AP. She has radar, which we have now popped to spot the Kagoro. And I'm also using Halsey on this ship with the new expert loader skill active. So I just fired AP. I got HE set of the tubes right now you probably saw it earlier halsey does have the improved reload um expert re reloader skill 
Here we get up, lined up on the Kagura with our nine guns. Let them rip. Dispersion isn't that great, but we still rip about 4,800 HP off of the Kagero. I'm slowing down because I'm pretty sure he's got torpedoes in the water. And I also uh, popped just before this engagement hydroacoustic search. There are his torpedoes. Thankfully, ours are uh, very quick deceleration brought us to a stop and threw off a shot. So there goes the Kagro. But now I've got the Leon in my face. I'm loading up AP again. Uh, turret number three has finished loading before the other two because she, um, she was, I believe, already reloading. But now the Leon's charging forward. I'm trying to outturn him here. Had three fires on my Alaska. Popped that to get those fires going off. 12k, 11k on the Leon. Our friendly Amagi comes in clutch. Cleans about 8k off of him. We finish him off with a blast to the superstructure. And there he goes. So now we got the Zeton. And Zeton has a lot of secondary guns that can and will pin the armor of the Alaska. And they are pinning my armor. Probably has IFHE on his secondaries. And plus his 15 inch guns hurt as well. However, the Alaska does have, does have a 27 millimeter bow. So once you go bow into this man, no longer will he be able to pin us with his main battery guns. But his secondary guns are still doing, as you can see right there, a pretty darn good job of that. But we do have his broadside with our super heavy American AP, which, man, again, Spurgeon does not like me today in this match. So we chunked him for 10k earlier, then 6k just then, and secondary rips another 1700 HP off of our superstructure before he manages to get behind the island. Now, thankfully, I still have three hills up on the Alaska. We've got another 10 seconds before it comes off a of cooldown now. And we're going to keep pushing around the corner to help out our friendly Amagia that helped us out since he was so instrumental to us surviving with the Leon. It's so rare that you see teammates that actually have an idea of what they should do to help out their, their fellow teammates. So we're going to make sure to return the favor here because Zeton, once that thing gets close, even though it's at low health, it will absolutely tear you a new one. Plus, things aren't going so well in the east. If you look at the mini-map, you'll see that our team's in full retreat. And even though we have sunk uh, three ships now out here, uh, our team's getting kind of walked over out east. So we need to go ahead and get back there as fast as possible. Now, thankfully, the Alaska is, I mean, for, for an American cruiser, she's pretty quick. Now, she's not up there rocking and rolling at 40 knots or anything, but she can get around the map quite comfortably. And as you can see from the little demonstration already, she's quite tanky, able to push into three enemy ships and uh, still come out relatively intact. You know, just need a new coat of paint here and there. But yes, yeah, Alaska is a great premium ship. She is unfortunately one of the removed ships. However, she's coming up for sale again in the upcoming uh, Black Friday event. But Sea Lord, the new Black Friday ships are, have already been announced. Uh, yes, they have. However, for the past five, six years now, five years now, I think, every single Black Friday event, the previous ships from the prior Black Friday events have gone back up for sale. It's how the event works. Bunch of rare ships for sale. We're giving those that make quite a bit of money from it because players want these ships. The Alaska is one I definitely recommend you get. The Alaska B is exactly like the Alaska here in every way, shape, and form. The only difference is that she comes with a neat black camouflage that you can rip off because that literally has no effect on anything anymore. And you can just put a normal camo on it and you'll have essentially an Alaska. Or you can keep the black camo on it. It looks pretty neat. The Alaska and the Jean Bar are the only two that I would say is really worth throwing out the money for as they are removed ships that you can no longer acquire. Beyond that, the rest of the events just there. Uh, again, most of the other ships, I think there's maybe one or two other removed ships that are offered in Black Friday event, uh, this, that are offered during the Black Friday event, but I wouldn't really say go for them. These two are the only two that I would say. But, I mean, look at the Alaska. You get nine 305mm guns. You get a 27mm hull with a bound stern rating thickness of that. Thickness rating of that. You get radar, that 10 kilometer American radar you get hydroacoustic search you get the super heavy american ap and those 305 millimeter guns that when dispersion cooperates with you which it hasn't really been for me this round you can absolutely be punching the living crap out of enemy ships and keep in mind too with the normal size cruiser caliber guns like the eight inch guns of the american tech line cruisers they already pack one hell of a punch now imagine those up to 305 millimeter guns with that same super heavy ap and this three 305 millimeter guns really hit like 
380 millimeter or 15 inch guns. Here's the Vaclin coming backing around the corner here. Now, since we were able to capture our side and eliminate all the enemy ships over there, we now have free reign of this side of the map and we're able to push out wide and get some nice cross shots in there. That's why the Vaclin's having to back up and keep his bow pointed toward our team and try to avoid the torpedoes from <clears throat> the Kaga. We were able to get aside and finish him off there for, er for our fourth kill of the match. And FGG, I thought he was going to keep, he was going to continue on his way and go around the island, but no, he took a hard turn into the cap. So now we unfortunately missed that shot. And I'm trying to see exactly what he's doing right here. I'm trying to arc the shells over the island. But then I see, oh, look at this Mayoko. And also on the minimap that he was starting to push around the corner. I didn't think he was going to do this because, well, I'm right here and I just fired and I was detected there for a second. But no, he decides that he wants to push her out around this corner. We do also have our Lay Fantastic going with us as well, so we're not completely alone engaging this guy. He's turning. I wait to get a little bit ways um, more away from the island, fire those shells, and finally Dispersion agrees with me, and there we go. We get Kraken unleashed. But wait, there is plenty more to come. We still have nine minutes left, and the enemy team still has the B cap. I turn, I turn a little bit too hard, and unfortunately I wind up eating one torpedo on the nose. And now we have the attention of the Kaga. And unfortunately for me, my Alaska has already been through quite a lot. So my AA isn't entirely there. And it's pretty heavily damaged. You can see all up and down the superstructure and the deck of the Alaska, the burnt out AA mount. So unfortunately, Alaska, Alaska doesn't normally have pretty darn good AA. But we are in a really in a situation to take usage of that. And ah... Uh, I was trying to slow down there to uh, get within the arming range of the Kaga's Torps, but unfortunately, I was not able to slow down fast enough. Now, most of the enemy team is inside this cap circle at the moment. FDG is coming up broadside onto us, so I'm going to go ahead and push up and get some broadside shots into him as he's bearing down pretty hard on our Magi right now, our friend from earlier that we want to make sure stays alive for as long as possible. So he eats a couple torpedoes there from our Kaga. We're coming around the corner right now. I get the front barrels clear and I let him go. And he's very low. So we secure the kill on him for our kill number six. And look at this. It's the enemy Kaga who's very, very, very focused on our fate, our Le Fantastique right now rather than me. Which I would think he would want to get me first since I'm, you know, the one shooting him in this broadside at the moment. Nine kilometers away, no citadels, but we get four good pins for 16k. And the Amagi slaps the hawk out of existence. Again, our, our friendly Amagi coming in clutch there. Kaga lined up the shots again. I think I got to line up perfectly with the citadel. And then the FDG's corpse get, does a get down, Mr. President, for the Kaga. And eats those shells. And probably saves, I would say, probably at least 15k health from the Kaga. We try to avoid these torpedoes, try to make sure I eat those on the torpedo belt so no floodings will start. Um, thankfully, no floodings do start, but we still eat one torp. The Kaga's coming in again, and I'm trying to turn just to get my guns into the Kaga, see if we can take him out of the match. Get the rear turret off, and the Kaga torps, we eat one, two on the torpedo protection, and the bow just barely misses torpedo number three. So now, I'm spotted by the Kaga's fighters. The Kaga's coming back again. The North Carolina's looking at me, which is very scary indeed. Because North Carolina has some very good guns. I get one broadside off on the Kaga. I'm turning into North Carolina to present him with the smallest profile possible of my Alaska. And I'm, I'm, I've been out of hills too. We get him down to 1,400 HP, taking 13k HP off him. I get the front two turrets out just as the North Cal finish, finishes me off. And we get him. <laughs> we get just a flesh rune on top of our Kraken and our seventh kill of the match. So now at this point, they're down Akaga. He's got one last squadron out on our Lay Fantast. And or does he? Did, did they run out of fuel? Nope, there they are. And we have Arkaga. Arkaga is currently stuck on an island. I'm assuming he set autopilot to get him off this island, but we all know how wonderful the game's autopilot is. Right now, he could be sailing forward and clearly getting away from the island, but autopilot still has him going backwards. God, I love autopilot. Kaga's currently dropping on the Alaska at the moment. Got a pretty good broadside there for the Alaska, but again, the Alaska's a very maneuverable ship. Dispersion doesn't really work out in the Kaga's favor. 
Alaska eats one torpedo off of that salvo. And the Kaga is still going backwards. It does look like he is slowing down now and starting to go forward. Um, please go forward. There we go. There comes the smoke out of his exhaust. I don't know if it's autopilot going this slow or if he's manually controlling the uh, the carrier or whatever. But he's going forward now, uh, but unfortunately the Alaska's back in gun range. She's dropping the Alaska again with the torpedoes. Those were way too short. Uh, but the Alaska turns into them, and he still manages to eat one, all right? But unfortunately, there goes our Kaga. However, since the enemy CV is down, no one can see our lay fantastic right now. And the Kaga still does have one squadron of planes left. And, well, Alaska's AA opens up on him. And, oh, he just absolutely consumes a flat cloud there. Starts to dive on the Alaska, gets his bombs off, gets him down to 3,400 HP. Now, I don't know if this Alaska has any heals left or not, but that is super low. Just needs one really good strike left. But unfortunately, Alaska's AA, even as damaged as that one is, does not get, the planes do not get through. Uh, Le Fantas seems to be having trouble getting off of this island right now. So French DD has a very large turning circle radius. Three minutes left on the clock, and we just need this Le Fantas to go over and grab the sea cap, which I suggest he do in chat, because Alaska's way the hell out of the fight. Like I was telling you guys earlier, she's a fast ship for an American cruiser, but she's not exactly uh, you know breaking any barriers or anything at all. So if he can get to sea. He'll be fine. The Alaska's way the hell out there with his radar. North Carolina only goes 28 knots. By the time the North Cal gets into the A cap, he should, even with being stuck on the island at B, be able to get into the C cap just fine. He starts making his way over there, and sure enough, there's the North Carolina chugging along on his way to the A cap. Alaska, if he's playing it smart, would rush to the C cap. Knowing that we're down 221 points, we need every single cap that we can get, but he is pretty low. The Alaska's, I'm sorry, the, the, the Le Fantastic is pretty low too, but Le Fantastic is a very quick DD when he's got speed boost going, and you could very easily chew through 3400 HP on an Alaska, especially with those French guns. So it's a bit risky for the Alaska to come over here, but he wants to catch him, that's what he needs to do. However, turns out, time is not on my team's side. And before the Alaska is able to... Well, actually, the Alaska doesn't go over here. It goes over to the A-cap with the North Carolina. Our Le Fantas did manage to secure the C-cap. But, unfortunately, there just wasn't enough time left in the match. And we lost the match. Despite me getting seven kills, we lost. Unfortunately. Now, I know, like, two or three of those were kill secures. But, hey, look. Big kill number with the funny red ribbons. It was a good match. It was a rare good match. This one went down to the wire. Came down to just two or three ships at the end of the match. A very rare match for today's game. So, I just figured you guys would be interested in seeing how that went. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I want to get 40,000 subs, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. We are doing a giveaway once we get there. We're under 700 subs away from that goal, so that is awesome, you guys. I will tr be live streaming tonight on Twitch and on YouTube around 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time. We've been having some troubles with my internet, so if it does get canceled, just check uh, the community tab on YouTube or join the Discord, and I will make an announcement there if it gets canceled. But we are going to try, and hopefully, if the internet gods are kind, we will have a stream tonight when we're checking out all the wacky sub-adventures and such. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.